So we'll pick up where John left us with. Um, we have uh, now added the idea of uh, variables and the ability to manipulate variables using assignment statements and to use variables inside a print statement so that we can um, display the contents of these variables on the screen. Um, so one of the things that we uh, learn um, as in, in, in a programming language like C is that we don't always write everything ourselves. That is, we have the code that does the work, but we are also invoking functions. This is, this is called a function, a function, invoking a function to do something. Here's a system function we invoke. Here's another system function we invoke. And um, so uh, following the same line, we will write our own functions so that we could reuse them. For example, if I were trying to compute the area of a, of a, a room uh, of a different side, then I would change side and then I would have another statement that recomputes a side. How about we write a function that will compute the side and we can invoke it again and again. So this allows us the um, modularity that we want when we write programs. So in order to do that, I'm going to first um, uh, define what it, what it is that I'm going to be calling. So um, I, will, I will start by, um, by adding another um, subsection, if you will, to my preprocessor directives section. Uh, I call this the um, the function prototypes. That is, a function prototype, the idea of uh, specifying function prototypes is to say, what is a, what does this function expect? So for example, I'm going to have a function which is going to be called cal calculate area. I'm going to give it a name which is calculate area. And this function expects as inputs, and I specify that by putting them in braces, it expects a single input. To calculate the area of a room, I need one input. And the one input I need is an unsigned long, uh, type unsigned long, I need a, a, I'm just gonna give it a name, and I'm gonna call it uh, S. So it expects a side S. and what it also does is it returns something that is it calculates the area and the calculated area is also an unsigned long so this function prototype is saying so says calc area expects Uh, an unsigned long and returns an unsigned long. Now, this the idea of the prototype is so that this is what we say, what we call as a compiler directive. That is, it is to help the compiler. So compiler aid for type checking. And we'll see what that means in just a second. So all this is saying is that there is gonna be a subroutine called calculate area, but we don't still have what it actually does. So what we do is we write our subroutines. Remember the subroutine section, the mandatory subroutine, but we're adding a new subroutine, which again is gonna be a subroutine which takes, called calc area, which takes as input an unsigned long S and returns a output. And all subroutines that have are enclosed in in our curly braces. So I have uh, this subroutine, but I haven't provided the body of this subroutine yet. And so I'm gonna write some code here. Like the main subroutine, I will define any variables I'm gonna use in the subroutine. 
up front so I'm gonna div divide uh, define a variable called um, result which will hold the result of my computation and it's gonna be of unsigned long and this result for me is gonna be simply uh, getting the contents of the side multiplied by side and put the result back and I'm gonna return this back to the whoever calls the subroutine so I'm gonna say return result so this subroutine then when invoked will calc will take what is passed to it which is the one input that is passed to it use it in a computation produce a result and return the result back so so now this allows me um, uh, a nice way of, uh, of modifying my main program so that I can invoke this. Um, as a convention, I like to always specify what a subroutine does by putting some comments above it. And my, my idea is to say something about this. So it says calculates area and I might put some more comments, but the most important thing is to say what it expects as input, what it returns as output, and if I have any notes for a caller who want to call this routine. So my input is it expects a, a side of a square, side of a room which is an unsigned long and it returns the area of the room which is uh, also an unsigned long and if I have any notes for example I'm I want to make sure that there's uh, certain certain criteria that are maintained so I'm gonna put some note here but for now I'll leave that blank and I'm gonna fill it later so let's go ahead and invoke this subroutine so this is called the body of the subroutine this is our prototype of the subroutine and now we look at the invocation of the subroutine. I'm no longer gonna do the computation in my main, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, call a subroutine to do the work for me. So I'm gonna say call calc area, and I wanna pass it something. So I'm gonna pass it the side, which I, which I just initialized to three. So I'm gonna pass that, I'm gonna pass side to it. So the idea now is that when this statement is executed, the control is gonna go to the body of the subroutine here, and whatever I pass to it, it's gonna get be stored in this variable s, which is then used inside this computation. So let's go ahead and change my, uh, run the changed code. Um, so, the way I'm gonna do that as again is rebuild the project, build target, and um, and we'll debug it. So when we debug it this time around, so I'm gonna run, run the debugger. So I will single step through it as we did before. So here's my first step. Now, when I have a when I have this variable side, I can look at it like we said before. Here is my memory memory window which shows me the variables. Uh, I'm gonna make it a little larger. It's so. not memory, it's a watch. Go oh, it's a watch window. Okay, so you gotta okay. let, let me say. Um, so let's look at the contents of my variables. So I'm gonna add the watch window. So here's my watch window. Um, and the watch window was uh, John previously set my side and area. So I'm gonna just look at that. I'm gonna step over, step over, step over. Now, when I get to the next line, which is my area, this line, where there's a call to a subroutine, I don't do a step over. So this is a step over button which is an F10 button and there's a step into button the step into step one line will let me enter the subroutine so I'm gonna click that so notice that the control moves to the subroutine 
So now I can now look at, so I can step, and one of the things I can do is I can look at this variable s. Now if I hover on it, it'll show me, or I could also add it to the watch window. For now, I'm not gonna add, add it to the watch window because I can just hover on it. Um, if I look at the result, right now result has not been set, so it doesn't have a value. I step over, and now result has a value which is nine. So I, this time when I say step over, it's gonna go back to where my main program called it. So I'm gonna go ahead and run to completion. I see my result. Now let's let's make make this actually worth our while. So that is we we can invoke the subroutine multiple times. So maybe what I do is I change side. I say take the old value of side and add two to it. And once I add two to it, it has a different side. And this time I'm gonna re-invoke the re-invoke the subroutine area and I'm gonna pass it this new side. And what I'm also gonna do, so let's quit the debugger and go back here and re edit it. So I'm also going to take this line and copy it back here so that I have two prints to this to the screen. And to make it pretty, I'm gonna put a new line at the beginning and a new line at the end so that it looks nice. So let's uh, build a project, build target, and let's debug it. So we run our code. We'll look at our uh, watch window uh, down here. It's uh, uh, let's go ahead and add the watch window, um, and we have our UART window right here. So I'm going to step over um, the first couple of statements. Step over. Step over. The first area I calculate is an area of side of room of side three. So that shows up as this statement right here, which is gonna be completed as soon as I see the next print statement. And so that I run it this next time, and this time around I run it, and I see three meters, nine square meters, five meters, an area of 25 square meters. So let's um, add some more features, uh, programming language features to this code that will make it uh, more realistic.